What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. Mike and Millsy in the house. It's a lovely, lovely sunny day. So apologies if there's any glare from either of us. I've, I've got a nice shiny face on one side. So, um, <laughs> Millsy, 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 Millsy. It's it's probably best to start off with probably the bad news. Let's let's get the bad news out of the way. Calvert Lewin's injury. Yeah, what, um, what does that mean for the start of the season for us? Well, it forces the hand to go into the transfer market, which I don't think, position wise, that they wanted to do. I I, I think with the fact that he's played Delhi as a false nine at times in preseason. I think the fact that he's he probably thinks he's got that alongside two strikers going into maybe January where uh, maybe a January is where you could then offload someone again, even a maybe a Yerry Mina with six months left and bring some money into I think that was the, I think that was the plan. It forces our hand to go into the market. Now in when we do this show in a few months' time, in hindsight, will that be a positive? And, and it's it's a, it's a weird way of looking at it. I, I understand that. It's a weird way of looking at it. But I personally think that we have been caught out already and we were always going to get caught out with going into the season with just DCL and just runs on. We could not go into the season past the transfer window with two strikers because those two strikers were there last season alongside our top goal scorer and look what happened it was nearly the abyss so that needed addressing in my opinion and i think the hands may have been forced to do it i just hope i just hope that the hand being forced to do it is not going to take away the hand that's trying to do other things where we need a couple of midfielders we, we probably need more creativity i think this everton team in my opinion more than anything need goals and we have to now go and buy it there's no doubt about it because it's three months that Lewin's out for. Three months it's coming up on a Twitter. Now we're doing this on, on Wednesday afternoon. So it's all being released now. I, I heard three months last night, but obviously you, you don't want to say, say that too loud. But with, now some people are saying three months. We can't go into October, November with London and Dali Ali. So we've now got to go and buy goals. And maybe we should have done it sooner. I don't know what you think. I agree with you. So I, I, I think this should have been addressed irrespective of the Calvert-Lewin injury. We needed we needed a striker, irrespective of Calvert-Lewin. Um, yep. McNeil, McNeil can't play up front. He's never played as a number nine, so he, he can't do it. Um, he looked very good coming off the wing and, and even playing yep. in the middle a little bit when he threw the middle, he looked fine, but he can't play as a number nine. So you've then got Rondon, who, let's be honest, none of us probably want to really see very much next season. And you've got Deli Alley, who has looked okay playing in that false nine position. But again, yeah. who's going to make that 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 little march onto the six-yard line, you know, to, to header a goal? Or who's going to be the one that's going to break through the defence, through that line and run onto through balls? You can't play a false nine in that sense. So no. we definitely need a striker. We've been linked with a few. We've been linked with Brozier, who, who we know was at Southampton last season. Um, Chelsea were meant to have been interested in looking at him, then they weren't, then they was. So I don't really know what's going on with that. West Ham have been linked with every striker that we have been linked with. So, you know, they might go after him. Um, Mishi Bashwari, we've been linked with, and apparently that's not going anywhere. So I sit here and I, I scratch my head going, we've needed a striker for probably the best part of <laughs> two, three months. Really, because we knew Richarlison or Calvert Loom were going. We knew one of them were going. Yeah. Um, and we are now we are now here. So I, it, it, it frustrates me massively. Yeah, and, and that's why I said it when we talk about this subject again in a couple of months. I'm really hoping, in hindsight, it, it, that I, I don't wish Dominic Dom Calvert Loom injured. Of course, don't. I, I want him to go and have the best season of his life. I want him to go and take his early season form into the World Cup. And I want, I want him to be a success. But if you remember when Roberto Martinez came in in 2013 and we had um, we had Jelovic and, and he brought Kone in with him, 
And all the noises were that he was happy with Jelovic and Kone and that was going to be the two. And very, very early on, before the window shut, but very, very early on, Kone got injured and it yeah. forced us to go get Romelu Lukaku. I mean, what, he, what, looked, what a move that was, by the exactly. way. Exactly. And in, in hindsight, you look at that and you go, you don't wish anybody to be hurt. You, you, no matter the skill set of them, you don't wish anybody to be hurt and, and not play football. But sometimes things happen. Sometimes these things create the first domino and then other dominoes fall. And who knows now that we may go into the last week of the, of the transfer window, hopefully maybe even earlier, but no one ever. And the last week of the transfer window and we bring in Brozier, who we were never going to bring in. And I've, I've stranger things happen than Brozier to hit the floor run, uh, hit the ground running, sorry. And, and then all of a sudden we've got a really good number nine coming back in to challenge another number nine. And, and that's where this football club should be. And it shouldn't take an injury for it, for, for that to happen. We, we, Bro, Brogia or the likes of Brogia should have been in America three weeks ago, splitting the game to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I understand why that possibly hasn't happened due to finances. Um, but I, I'm just trying to put as, as positive a spin on it as possible. Um, going into Saturday, we are, a, we are weaker. Make no doubt about it. We are weaker going into Saturday without Dominic Calvert-Lewin. If we then go into Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest and Leeds without Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Yes, we are weaker. I just think we now, we have to, we have to go and buy goals. Whereas if he was fit, I don't think they would have done. Yeah, I I completely agree. The problem you've got, and, and we've had this all season, is we've got a limited budget anyway. Yeah. Now, we've been linked over and over again with Maxwell Cornet who has also been linked with West Ham and Forest and Fulham yeah. and a couple of others. He doesn't solve that problem. No, so it's... you are right in saying us bringing in another striker, does that affect, affect the chances of us signing him? Who good <laughs> nine goals in 28 games this season, having been completely fresh to the Premier League? It's a problem. It probably does. You're right on what you're saying. It it probably does. But again, the flip side, and then you're going to leave this podcast really shocked. Say, Mike, I'm going to try and be as positive as ever. You're going to you're going to think, who the hell is that guy? But good. Yes, we need to replace Richarlison's goals, and Maxwell Corner and Paper would have done that. But if you're only replacing Richarlison's goals, then the football team aren't really improving. What we need is we need to bring someone in who will score those goals, and then we need to hope that Anthony Gordon goes up a level and next season is the season that we see end product because everything else is there apart from end product now again i'm going back in time comparisons ross barkley in 2011 in 2012 played certain amount of games seven football club but there was certainly no end product in 2013-14 we've seen it we, we then seen a player who then went to the world cup at the end of that season yeah. can Anthony gordon do that this season i really really hope so, so you're hoping for for Richardson's goals to be replaced, and then you're hoping that that Anthony Gordon kicks on, and I and I think that's, I think look, judging our season going forward now, I, I think a lot of it, and I'm putting pressure on this this lad's shoulders that probably shouldn't be doing it, but I think a lot of what we do this season will be down to how, how Anthony Gordon improves. Yeah, it's interesting, really, because in in that actual position. You've got three players, and I've said this before, that have points to prove. And we, we mentioned it last season. You've got you've got well four players. You've got Dwight McNeil, who had let's be let's be honest, he had a shocking season last season up to yeah. his stand. One assist in thirty odd games. He's nowhere near the player that had been linked with us for thirty five million, linked with Villa, linked with Manchester United, I think the season before. Who was was sort of really deemed a talisman for Burnley, and then last season when they needed him most, he wasn't there. He he, he just wasn't there. He wasn't at the races. Um, so he's got a big big point to prove this season. Then you've got Delhi Alley, who many Evertonians have, have probably not taken to as well as he would probably hope. So you've yeah. got that problem. Then on top of that, you've got the players like Gordon, as you've mentioned. The end product needs to be better because he's a young lad and he's coming to the team and we understand that we'll give him time. And then you've also got Damari Gray, who had a really good start to the season, but you can probably argue didn't have as good an 
end to the season and we only saw flashes of his of his quality. So yeah. you've got four players who can play just behind a striker that give us options, give us skill, give us pace, give us potentially goals, assists and crosses. It's that person putting the ball in the net. And I was I was fairly confident that Calvert Lewin, as long as he stayed fit, would have a really good season this season. Yeah, but actually same. I'm now really worried about the goals because you're not getting them from Rondon. And nope. how how much money does it cost to bring in a striker that can even get you 10 goals, never alone 15 or 20? How much money does that actually cost? It, we've got to be creative. There's no doubt about it because the, the, the players out there that we need, we can't afford. Now, I, I imagine there's a number of, of Premier League strikers who, who would give you 10 goals who maybe are not great players, but they'd cost it. In, in this environment now where, where people not only know Everton's situation, but some teams are, are cash rich, but the, they haven't been as negligent with money as we've done, so they're not in a position yeah. we're in. You, you, you look at the, the, the guy from Hull that like we tried to get, um, I forget his name, the young man's under 21. Yeah, yeah, Potter. Kane Lewis Potter, and, and then Hull were like, we don't need to sell to you. We're not as negligent with our money as you. We're not as skin tight, and we're going to come up with that. You've got to be creative. Um, the, the problem with that is our, our scouting department have, have historically not been very, very good. Um, you, you could say there's the signs of that already. Th this this transfer window that we're we're going for players that that maybe we should be going to try and find the next Richarlison, the next Basuma, yeah. the the next you know Julian Lescott, and, and and look at those players and the budget buys four of them. Everton don't do that, but but for this in this scenario, we absolutely have to be creative. Um, I think you you're relying now on Chelsea looking at Brozier and maybe deciding late on in the window that they don't fancy taking him into their big season where they want to do X, Y, and Z. They they want to be successful. They, they want to win the Champions League. They want to finish high up in the league, and, and he's not ready for that. However, with another good loan, i.e. when Lukaku once went to West Brom and then he went to Everton, because yeah. Everton was, was higher up, and, and that's maybe Southampton fans will not agree with that, that Everton are higher up than Southampton, but I, I think there's real, real potential this season for us to to do that. Maybe that is the creativity and a little bit of luck and the relationship with our current manager and that club. Um, failing that, I, I don't know how creative this Everton recruitment team could be. I, I, I don't think that they're going to go out and find a, a, a Dutch, Belgian, French, Spanish international the under 21 international who 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 won't cost a lot and then they'll have to sell on value and he'll perform the season i don't think our scout network as as has that in them so i th I, I mean i'm re repeating myself i think it's going to be brosier I, I think frank lampard and kevin thell will be now looking and say we now need to go back to that one and, and let's let's rely on the fact we can get them on loan i hope so <laughs> I hope. I, I, think, hope I, think I think that's it. I think that's I, all we can I do. Hope so because you know you, you you're right. You have mentioned you know that you said about other strikers in the Premier League that can score you ten goals, and you are right. There is other players, but thinking off the top of my head, you know, there's not loads that stand out. If if I was, if there was, if there was ish, if there wasn't the whole Liverpool connection, maybe Danny Ings would have fit in that bill. Because I don't, I don't think it would cost you mega money either. I think Villa have, I think they're looking to maybe him go. So <laughs> that could be one. But yeah, there isn't, there isn't lots of options. Mister Bashwari is another option. He doesn't guarantee you ten goals a season, in my opinion, because I think he struggled you, for about. Yeah, you're, you're right. So, and, and again, if, if you had if you had money, you, you'd probably go and try and get a, a Bamford or, or an Ianacho or something. But again, they, they, you're putting a two or a three in front you, of that transfer. We can't do it. Do you think, and this is hindsight now, and this is me asking you a question, do you think if Everton had had a better relationship and things had gone better with Moyes Keane, do you think this would be his moment? No. And, and and the only reason I say that is because Dominic Calvert Lewin went down quite early last season, and we had the the nonsense of playing an unfit Rondon 
and we still let Moise Keane go out on loan. Now, now I, I may have that timeline a little bit wrong. Maybe Lewin got injured just after Moise Keane went. But I, I think I'm borderline yeah. right on. I'm very close. If you can't look at a squad that has Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Rondon as the only strikers and say, we'll keep this kid around last season, you would, it's not this season. It's it's not. Uh, the, the best thing Moise Keane, Moise Keane can do forever and now is, is, is just to score two more goals in pre-season and bring that transfer fee forward. That's the best thing. I, I, the relationship with Moise Keane it was... I think it was gone two years ago. I, I think if, if I was a... And it's hard to say this, I'm not judging the poor lad, but if I was a, a young international player and Carlo Ancelotti was my coach, I, I wouldn't leave that. I uh, said so two years ago he'd done that. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And he, and yeah, he went to PSG, he went to play Champions League football, so the argument against that is, is of course. But if my parent club was being managed by Carlo Angelotti and two years ago what perceived to be the ambition that we had and he didn't stick around for that. He, he wanted out two years ago, maybe maybe more. I, I think it's... I, 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 do you know what? I forgot he was even technically still our player until you mentioned him. But I, I, no, I, I, I think his chance, his chance went a while back, I think. Fair enough. And then, and then obviously, we've got kids. So Dobbin, for example, he's been linked with loan moves. Now, yeah. I'm not sitting there saying, throw Dobbin in as your first choice number nine for three months. I'm not saying that. But does that stop yeah. the loan move for him? It, it has to. It, it absolutely has to. Now, now the, the plan should still be that he spends this season out on loan and, and he, he becomes a better football but it, it certainly can't be until we until we do something in this window it can't yeah. be we we cannot loan him out and this is and you know what people people might laugh at this if we loan him out and then what happens if Ronson breaks an ankle at, at, at Villa Park oh. you can't you can't you can't you, you can't until we've got something in place he can't go on loan, but the but the plan should still be for him to go. If Kevin Thayer was looked at that with, with the manager and said he'll come back next summer a better player and we'll take him abroad again, we'll have another look at him. But right now he's too raw. Then the right thing is to loan him out. But we can't do it at the moment. We just can't until there's a replacement. And the other one's bro- Broadhead, isn't it? Broadhead is somehow still around he's now. He's he's had he's had no minutes in preseason, so so I don't even think he's part of it. But again, but apparently he's been offered a new deal. Or I was reading today or something. Yeah, because you can't. It's because he's got twelve months left on his contract, and you can't loan someone out with twelve months left on a contract. And that's the whole issue I've read in relation to Barkley. Like like when Barkley's being touted around, are uh, apparently and I don't I don't know this from anybody other than I'm just mm-hmm. reading certain things. Apparently, our our very small interest was. Well, we'll possibly look at a loan, and that was gone. You can't loan him. He's got 12 months left, so you've got to take over his contract. He's on mega money. So, so that's the broad type thing. I think you can't loan him out. And he's um, he's very, very close to, to being a regular or, or, or getting some game time for Wales, which may bump his price up. If you, if you, yeah. if you sign him down to a two-year contract and you sell him next summer, you might get $5 million opposed to half a million now. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Let's talk about another position then that Everton have been linked with the return of Ladrissa Garner guy, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not going to undercook it or overcook it. Uh, I am all for this transfer. All, all so I've for seen it. your video. I've seen, I've seen your yeah. great video last week talking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it for several reasons. And look, I'm, I, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I understand that uh, religious beliefs and and other beliefs are pretty much kicking off against each other. I'm not going to discuss any of that. No. What I'm going to discuss is how good of a footballer. He is, and what he will add. Now, yes, he's he's going to come back three years older than he was when he left. But what Garner still does, and he did for PSG last season, is he still played 34 games. He still scored four goals. He still broke down play. He still played fantastically against teams like Real Madrid. So this is a guy that is still a footballer at a very, very high level. This is a... I, I would argue this is an even better signing than what Gareth Barry was. He was on the I, same age, wasn't he, Barry? Just about the same age, 32. I think, was I, it, I yeah. think Barry was old. I think he was a bit older. But okay. are you happy with Garner if he signs? Yeah, I am. Of course I am. Um, what, what, what? The first thing I think of is how good he was. So that, that then gives you a double-edged sword of... First question is, is he still that good? 
Uh, maybe a lot of viewers of, of this show will, will be able to address this in the comments and they watch more Champions League football or they watch more Paris Saint-Germain games. Maybe even you, Mike. I, I personally haven't watched it. I, I wouldn't have watched more than half an hour of a Drissagana game since he's left Everton, and, and that would have been by it. That would have been me stumbled on the game after two cans on a Tuesday night. But mm. it's, it's not me going out to watch him. So I I don't know if if he's still the same player. If he is, or if he's seventy five percent of what he was, he improves Everton. I, I would I would hate I would hate for him to come back and be anything less than what. It, to be in that seventy five percent of what he was, because that would put us in a situation where we haven't really, we we haven't really improved the midfield. If if he can't stay fit and he can't get around the pitch at, at thirty three, then then that will be an issue. But and but I don't know that. I'm excited by getting the Ghana back that I seen play for my football club. If it's that hundred percent, a hundred percent, put him in there for one year or for two years. And maybe in year two, rotate him with a younger player and phase him out until we're in a situation at Bramley Moor where we can spend some money and build this team again. Because make no mistakes, until two years' time, unless we have a fire sale, it's it's two years' time when we go again. That's when yeah. we go again. That's when we attempt what we attempted for the past four or five years. We can't do it until that. So Garner Guy, if he gives you 75% or more than what we had from him previously, 100%, I'd be... I'd be excited to see him in front of the back four because there was times that midfield last season might got walked over. Watford's at home when they win and balls back from kickoff and just walking over Tom Davis and walking over Andre Gomez. And then um, I, 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 remember, I remember actually thinking if only you had a Garner in there or you had a Lee Carsley in there, it just wouldn't happen. And and that's what we've missed. So yeah, if, if that one gets done, hopefully by the time this video is out, it'll be done or hopefully whenever people watch this. But as it stands now, Wednesday afternoon, it's still not done. And and that to me is is mm, well, why why has that not been done? Um some credible people are, are saying that it's still on. Bobble, Fabrizio, credible people out there who know the talk about are saying it's still on. I would be happy, Mike, to get that one done. But again, it's it's once he's 20, 21, 22 games in and he's played them all back to back, he's 33. I think there has to be an element of caution with it. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And 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 look, the Ghana. What, what Garner does bring... So, yeah, look, I, I've, I've watched him a little bit over the last three years. Yeah. So I, I, I watch quite a lot of football. So, you know, it could be... Could be games in Portugal. Could be games yeah. in America. Could be games in France. doesn't really matter. If there's a game on, on, the, on the football, on the TV, I will watch it. It doesn't have, even have to be English commentary. It can be whatever. Um, and I've seen a few players over the years that we've been mentioned with, and I've thought, yeah, he would be brilliant. I.e. Mateus Nunes was one that um, yeah. I got heavily criticised because apparently I hadn't watched him, albeit I'd seen a lot of him, saw, saw him score some fantastic individual goals and still got a load of shit for it. So um, it, 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 it's Twitter for you, mate. It makes you laugh. But, have you seen, so, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Have you seen Twitter lately? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, just, I'm, be, I'm, I'm barely, barely tweeting. You know, it's, it's absolutely... People need, to calm, people need to calm the shit down, honestly. And I might get I might get loads of shit for that, but just calm down. There's, there's people being attacked. I don't care if you're 27 campaign or you're not. Just jib the insults. Stop it. It's Just stop it. Yeah. Anyway, but, sorry, I just, I just felt no, when you said no, that. No, you said no, sort of I, I, no, I've, I've had it myself. Don't forget, I'm on a, I'm on a Liverpool podcast, so I get it all. No, I get it myself. But some of the stuff I've seen this week just doesn't sit well. There's, 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 no, there's, all, there's, there's all sorts getting said. It, it, it should, it should never ever get personal. It, it's, we, it's our lifeblood. Everton is, is our, it's our religion, and it? it's our, it's our, it's our, it it's our pain. It, it doesn't have to be. Do you know, do you know what? If, if the man next to me just takes his kid because he only sees his kids once a week and that's all, and he doesn't want against the politics of who runs the football, but fucking fair play to you. If the other fella next to me is passionate about getting this thing right and, and, and protesting, fair play to you. But don't be fucking calling each other names and bringing families into it and all that. Yeah. If anyone's watching this, just doing that. Get a grip. Uh, mate, I agree. I agree. Um, Sorry. Anyway, you get, get get back to when you were being ripped. What was happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so obviously, I watch I watch a lot of football, and 
one one of the players that obviously you have watched is 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 Garner. Now, look, he hasn't started every game for PSG. He comes off the bench or he starts games. But what I've seen with Garner is he's prepared to carry the ball a bit more forward. He's learned to play a little bit more forward on the front foot, less sideways. He'll pick up the ball, he'll turn. And he used to do that at Everton and didn't really get the, the credit as a yeah. ball carrier. But what Garner does is he can pick up the ball from defence carry it 20 yards or 30 yards and lay off a little pass to someone. Now, that works in the system that Frank wants sensationally. Like, literally, he will be a middle pivot. So, the ball will go into him, he'll turn, knock it off left or right, and that, and, and and ideally, up front, you'd have a Calvert-Lewin on the end of these crosses. And that's what would happen. Yeah. If that doesn't work, you've got James Tarkowski, who's going to ping the ball, through the lines, midfield, up to striker, whatever. But Everton have all of a sudden got a few more options, which automatically adds a little bit more creativity when you're actually adding a defensive player. Yeah. So it would work it would work really well. Where it would go wrong with Garner, in my opinion, is you bring him into this football team and you do not play someone who was a little bit further forward than him. If you're going to play someone and stick them in line with Garner, it is not going to work. Because yeah. there is moments where his passing was weak, even at Everton, and it's been the same at PSG. He will retrieve the ball, but sometimes we all make mistakes. He'll give the ball away. He'll, he'll, he'll do something. If you play someone in front of him, he's always got that outlet. He's always got that person who he knows. He's 10 yards in front of him. That If he gets in trouble, he can lay off the ball. And because he's yeah. a little bit older, you rely on that person. Now, that could be a Decore. It could even be an Alan, a Gomez. and It doesn't matter who it is. But they need to be disciplined in doing that. Now, if you'd have said to me, it's going to be an attacking player, i.e. a Deli Alley. I want Deli Alley to be able to carry the ball a further 20 yards, a further 30 mm -hmm. yards, get himself in the final third, then get out that ball out left or right and make that charge into the box. And that's where the false nine works. So Garner absolutely works if you have a slightly more attacking player next to him. That's my so what, only... What, what, do you think it would work with a wall be next to him? Yes, I do. I absolutely... My... As of right now, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but as of right now, I would play Alex Iwobi as, as a number eight in the middle of the park, picking up the ball from our number six, Garner. Yeah. That's what I'd be doing. And it's mad to say that, but I trust Alex Iwobi enough to pass the ball forward and to carry the ball he is not a brilliant footballer, and my opinion is not going to have changed because he's played fairly well in pre-season. He had a decent end to the last season, and he's played a few good games. But I will give him the benefit of the doubt that, as of right now, he is better than Andre Gomez. He is better than Alan. Yeah. He is better than Tom Davies. And he gets yeah. all of that for me. So, in, in my mind, I'm, I'm for that. It's where the, it's where the midfield and formation break down. That's my worry. So when I look at Everton as we are, and obviously Calvert Lewin was at the top of this, what is your formation? What do you play against Chelsea? I I play what the manager wants. The manager's going to play. If, if anything from this preseason, you can take the, the the system. It may not be the personnel, but the system's going to be three. It's going to be three at the back. I mean, that could be a 3-4-3, could be a 3-4-2-1, could be a 3-5-2. I, I personally always feel more comfortable with either a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. Um, I always think that's where you, you will get the best out of. If you've got the right personnel, I think that could work fluidly. If you've got a Barry and a McCarthy, and then you've got a, a, a Morales, a Lukaku, a Barkley and a Pienaar, and then yeah. you've got the likes of you know, Darren Gibson, Leon Osman, who can come in at times and help. That's the example of the 13-14 season where it was fluid. And then the, the other example I've seen is when Ronald Koeman had a really good second half of his season where he played 4-3-3. I've always been more comfortable playing those. I know Moyes was also a 4-5-1 or a 4-2-3-1. I would personally, if I was coaching Everton or if I was director of football, I would say that is what every age group are playing and now we get the personnel. But I, but, but I, I see that we're not going that way. 
I can see that this man is a fan of three at the back. He tried it when he first came in. He's tried it in pre-season. When he played, when he didn't play it, he, he hammered them after Minnesota United. Uh, so much so that he had to ask the players for a reaction at Blackpool. So, to be asking your players for a reaction in pre-season, and he, and he name-checked that two at the back, the two centre-halves. I don't think he's going to go back there. So regardless of what I play, I, I think he's going to play three at the back. What about you? So, yeah, and, and actually, I'm the opposite to you. I'm absolutely fine with it. Okay. Now that we've got a defensive player, come hopefully touch wood, coming yeah. into that midfield. Because if you say to me, and, and it's also dependent on, on me and the staying fit. So if you're saying to me, you're playing a James Tarkowski on the right-hand side or the left, you're playing Mina in the middle, uh, Godfrey left side, then you've got Mikalenko and Patterson as your as your two wing backs. Yeah. Your mid your midfield I, I have Ghana and Iwobi in there. And then my front three originally were probably Dwight McNeil, Anthony Gordon and Calvert Lewin. Now obviously that, that has to change, but I I, tr- I truly believe that football team has got enough going forward and enough defensively. Because the five defensive players, when the defensive players get caught out of attack, Garner's got the discipline to step in. And we've, we know that because he's done it. So we're not going to have the same issue we did last season, in my opinion, because you're not going to have them balls in behind the fullbacks that we did. So, for example, before January, when Luca Dean would be on the left-hand side and going up the pitch... Yeah. He, he, his defensive capability was 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 really questioned, and the reason was he was constantly out of position and constantly yeah. wouldn't get back. And Allen and Decore, as much as they were meant to be disciplined, they would never get back in time to support on the left hand side. So he would always be exposed. The yeah. same would happen on the right hand side with Coleman. Coleman got ripped a new one over and over again because there wasn't that discipline in the middle of the park to cover him when he was going up the pitch. That's what you need your midfielder to do. So all of a sudden you go from you go from playing high up the line and only leaving two centre halves with them cutting balls through your channels and no centre midfielders could get anywhere near it because we were overexposed and we only had one because the other one were further up the pitch. So you was always playing three at the back almost, as yeah. in when we was in an attack a defensive transition. We were always getting smashed always but whereas if you're playing five at the back and those two people go up and you've got your three in a line Ghana dropping in when they haven't got the ball make, making it four at the back makes us much more solid so all of a sudden I go from worrying about conceding goals to worrying about us scoring goals and that that's my concern now if Ghana yeah. comes in it's not the defence that concerned me. It is scoring. As of right now, today, I am concerned of both because we haven't got Ghana, which means I don't trust the defence because I ha- we haven't got a midfield because we know we haven't. They, they were yeah. shocking last season. That ain't going to change. So what will happen is you will then have seven mm-hmm. players in the attacking half and three in defence. And a counter-attacking team will always have three or four players on the run ready to go at you. There's no pace in Mina and Tarkowski, really. Ben Godfrey will be on his own. So you, you get you get pegged. You get absolutely pegged. And that's how I have looked at our defensive transitions to our attacking transitions. Honestly, if I was an analyst, that is exactly what I would be saying. Make sure we have got that single pivot in the middle of the park for both the attacking and the defensive transition. So if mm-hmm. one of your fullbacks is up the pitch, you've got it covered. What I, what I did want to ask you, I was really interested to hear your thoughts on this, is is based on how we've played in pre-season, it, it has been a bit more expansive, uh, and it was expansive until probably Anfield's last season, uh, for the final six, yeah. seven games. I personally think that overall this season he will go back to that. I'm not so sure whether he will on Saturday. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be straight back to that or he's going to look at last season and go, let's just start this season trying to get a point on the board and, and maybe play that way that we ended? I think he's going to be really tight on Saturday. Okay. Um, you are right. 
He plays expansive. And, uh, and another thing that I want to add, he doesn't just play expansive. He plays a really aggressive press and counter for the first 15, 20 minutes of every yeah. game. Last season, that didn't work because a lot of the times we would be the best team for 10, 15 minutes. And then we would concede on the attack because of the defensive. Too what, I've on, <laughs> what I've just explained. Yeah. So we would we would be on the on the back foot. Again, adding someone like Garner into that team stops that. So we can press for 15, 20 minutes. And I feel comfortable we're not going to start conceding goals. Chelsea are a different outfit. Chelsea, they've had a very up and down pre-season. They're going to go into this season not particularly high in confidence. I would argue that the fans are concerned. Some fans are happy with Tuchel, uh, Tuchel some of them aren't. Um, I've never known a football team to be in such a, a sort of weird position before the season because they've gone from probably being, at the start of this window, a team that's signing Kula Barley and, you know, in my eyes, world-class players, to actually being probably slightly worse than they were last season, which is really weird to say from a from a perspective. Um, Raheem Sterling, and I mean, he's the one. Yeah, that I mean, they, they are definitely better than they were last season on paper, but yet it doesn't seem to have materialised on the pitch. So what I truly think is that it's going to be tight. It's going to be aggressive. It's going to be hostile because that's the way that Everton are going to want it. There's going to be the fans going crazy. But yeah, Frank... He's not going to set up to have lots of gaps. And you're going to see Iwobi, Dwight McNeil, Anthony Gordon, Damari Gray, whoever whoever plays as you attacking players, all told when we've got the ball and they've been in our half, hit them on the counter. And that is exactly what we're going to do. And, and I'll, I'll even go further than that. Everton win this game 2-1. Mate, I, I, I thought I was going to be positive on this show. You've just lapped me, left me for dead. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, people will go, you're absolutely mad. You can't just add one player into this mix. That is all dependent on Ghana coming, signing and starting. Okay. If he doesn't, I, 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 I don't necessarily think it's the same way because I don't I don't have the same trust in midfield with Ghana, uh, with, with Takora and Alan. And I know a lot of people have said, Mike, you, you're overcooking Garner here. You know, he's, he's 57 years old. What are you doing? You, you're putting too much hype on him. But I just know what he adds. And what he adds is a bit of what we've needed for a long time, actually since he left. Someone who can play on the turn and win the ball back. He adds it. The only thing that concerns me is the crossing still. Every time they get a, tr- a crossing opportunity and they put that ball into the box, specifically from corners, they've definitely got the height advantage on us if Mina doesn't play. Because Mina's one man, let's be honest, at times he's been flat-footed from corners as well. We, we saw it last season at times when he when he weren't injured. Defensively from crosses, we've looked pretty poor for three or four years. Let's, let's be straight. Um, we broke records, I think, last season. If them balls are going into the boxes, um, we've got to be so, so solid at the back because you've got Kulabali, you've got Silva, you've got all of the, the quality players that they've got all over the park. They will create chances. So it is genuinely on the three centre-halves being absolutely disciplined, your full-backs being able to be in the right position to defend and attack if needed. But from a goals perspective, it's about your midfielder being able to get that ball from the from the corner that Chelsea have, getting it on the edge of our box, turning and playing one of them attackers through because their defence will not be in position because Tuchel doesn't play like that and you play mm. through that line. And if you play through that line, Everton will get joy. They really will. It's, it's uh, everything you say. I, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Everything you say makes sense. If not, sack Lampard now and just put me in charge. I'll have you. <laughs> with this system. Hey, there's the uh, problem. There's the motivation. But no, mate. Honestly, look. All jokes aside, I, I'm, I'm really positive about this season. I wasn't. And if we walked in, if 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 you was to tell me at the end of August, this is Everton's team. I'll probably predict we finish 16th or 17th. I really do. 
However, if you do add Garner, if you do add a striker, if you do maybe add a number 10 or some, whatever, if you add a couple more players to this team, I really think we'll challenge the top 10, 12, which, look, that doesn't sound like it's it's brilliant. That You know, talking about a mid-table finish is not great for a club like Everton. But from where we were and how bad we was, we had we had every right to go down last season because we were yeah. so bad. And exactly right. I feel like the additions we've made have been okay. They've been good additions. But if you go and get me a striker that I rate and a Ghana that I rate, I'm over the moon. Yeah, I think the, the, the last part of what you've just said there is, is everything. I think if the window had closed last night, Good God, it's it's going to be tough. I, I still do think it's going to be tough. Um, we done a podcast over last night on, on our channel, and, and I said, as I said, I do think it's going to be tough. I think Everton, I think Everton do need to to, to do more in this transfer window, and, and that that was even with Dominic Carver Loon being fit. Yeah. Dominic Carver Loon could could have stayed fit and scored in all four games before the window closed. I'd still say we need more. Yeah, because um, we do. So. I'm probably not as optimistic as you going into the season. I personally feel it's going to be a tough one. Um, I think there's going to be times where we probably not need to come in the show and rant the way me and you tend to do. I think it probably does need some some cool heads. I think last season was more acceptable because we were coming off a season maybe just like Carlo and you know up until the last week of that season. <clears throat> excuse me, we were trying to get into Europe and then it was it was such a, a quick turnaround and and how we fell off and. That manager who was there last season before Frank was just beaming negativity, and so so last season I, th- I think there was more. It was more acceptable for us to be so emotional. I, I think this season our eyes are open more. I'd argue. I think our heads are screwed on a little bit more, um, and, and I think there's going to be moments that me and you leave the ground this season, not really enjoy our Saturday nights. There's going to be times we watch Everton on Super Sunday and probably not enjoy our Sunday evenings. But if we go into the season. And we don't over expect, and God love the fans who do. That's all about being a football fan is is wanting that. And I, I'm I'm certainly not expecting anything better than mid table. Put it that way. Um, and I would I would be very very happy that if I was sleeping in March and April 2023 because we were 11th and I weren't sitting there worrying about you know bringing my my children up into a world where Everton could be in the Championship and and waking up first thing and checking he was injured and and stuff. That I never want to go through that again. So I'm not hoping for more than mid-table, and, and, I, and I'd, I'd, I'd certainly take it. And I don't enjoy saying that. I do think no. it's going to be a. I, I think there's going to be tough moments this season. Cool. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I don't think this is going to be a great season. I I think it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster. But I think depending on the next few weeks of the window, will genuinely, really significantly affect where we finish. Um, and I think I think Lampard's got a tough job ahead because a lot of people expect him to fail. A lot of people, a lot of bookies expect yeah. him to fail. He's his favourite to be sacked. And I hope that it proves all of those people wrong because the one thing you can't say about Everton fact is they won't support this team because we will. And, and Frank Lampard is absolutely part of that. I love his honesty. Um, he has made mistakes. He made mistakes last season. I'm sure he'll make mistakes this season. He's a young manager. But but I certainly won't be turning on him too quickly like I did with Rafa. And, and, to, be honest, and, and to be honest, and, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, you, you mentioned about the fact it was a few seasons of, uh, a few, you know, a season of pretty painful season because Carlo went in June and you know all of that etc but the facts are we actually had been poor from February that year that year yeah. under Carlo we were poor so yeah. we we really have had a struggling team now for 18 months and at some point we've got to start going forward again last season was as, as low as I think I'm hoping it's going to get and next season this season coming now I'm hoping we're just backwards on a bit of an upward trajectory. And, and if that's 14th, 13th, 12th, 10th, 11th, bloody 6th, I don't care. As long as it's not 16th and lower, it's a it's a positive 
it's been more of a positive season for me. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> let's let's go let's go into it with our, with our eyes open. We we, we yeah. know the situation yeah. this football club is in. We know the situation, uh, and you know those group of players, their, their names will be etched in, in some sort of Everton history now for for that Crystal Palace game. And um, the bigger story, if they are they the ones who got us into it, that story won't be told. The story no. that will be told is, is how they got us out of it, and and. But I think we all know that that team is are not going to really pull up trees. That, that there's a there's a there's a couple of there's a couple of players in there. I mentioned that Anthony Gordon before. I think if you if you look at, I'm excited by um, the right back Patterson. I'm excited by what Godfrey and Tarkowski can do together. I think we've still got yeah. one of the best goalkeepers. And um, there's plenty of positives in that team. Um, but everything you said there, Mike, is is, is everything I'm thinking. Um, you you would now just have to take a mid-table finish and then say, right, let's go and enjoy the last year at Goodison Park, and then then the project starts again because it's it's we we can't we can't be as ambitious as we want to be as a football club until the financial mess is sorted out, and that will probably be twenty twenty four. Until the eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed, man. To, until we're praying a, a pre-season friendly for health and safety um, standards, yeah. Everton women versus... Uh, by the way, how, how proud are you that the England women, the Lionesses? I, I'm not too sure whether you spoke about this already, but good God, man, I was my house was bouncing on Sunday night. It, all, you know all that does now for me is like opens up a new generation of kids wanting to play football. Do, do you know what it was? Do you know what it was for me? It was, it was the fact that this is going to sound uh, mad, but it, it meant loads more to me because I've coached kids. I've coached yeah. uh, anyone from four years old up until they were probably 15, 16. I've coached children. And there was only one girl, I remember, only one girl in any of the sessions that I used to, I used to run. And I'm really, really hoping that this influences parents to to you know let their kids uh, express themselves on a football pitch <clears throat> i really hope that this allows children to be more vocal about wanting to play football and i really hope that this puts schools and academies really gearing up towards female football because one of the biggest things i'm passionate about is inclusivity and everyone being included in in anything you want to do. You know, if, if anything, if 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 people would judge me because I like going shopping because that's deemed as a as a lady's habit, then it's it's wrong. It doesn't matter anymore. And you know, I really want it that this generation, these fantastic lionesses, and all of the female footballers that over the last thirty or forty years have have. Have started this 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 trend of females football and this upwards trajectory. I really hope that more people go to uh, WSL games. I really hope that more people are committed to the to the female sport. I'm I'm, I'm hoping more school, schools become inclusive and universities etc. Because I want to see you know that pride of England winning a trophy. It didn't matter that it was females or males. It doesn't matter. It is England. You know, I, I didn't care when we won the Olympics and, you know, uh, a female runner won the Olympics or a male runner. It didn't matter. And football should be no yeah. different. So I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled that that this group of ladies, the, these women, they took on the world. They took on the establishment and they won. And And... You know, from going back in 1920s and 30s where you were having 50,000 fans at Everton to watch ladies football, for the FA to then ban it and for it to then come back a few years, well, 50 years later. Um, honestly, Matt, I couldn't explain how proud I was. I, honestly, I was... Yeah, honestly, absolutely the same. I, I take my little boy over to the, the women's games so I don't live too far. So yeah. I do take him quite regularly, and, and he's been to more women's games than he's been. He's only four, but he's, he's been to more women's games than he has um, Everton men's first team games. And, and he watched the world, the Euro final on Sunday night. He celebrated, and the biggest thing I take from it, well, there's, there's two things I take from it. The first one is, is racing to my little boy. Is he celebrated that 
not knowing a difference that it was women who've won at the men. He just seen that it was a football match that England won and his dad was happy and his mum was happy and he celebrated it. And the other thing is my, my little girl, she's only nine months, so so obviously no record didn't even know what was going on. However, yeah. I'm hoping now this when she goes to school and when she has options of what she wants to do with her life, football is now an option for her. It's never been an option for girls, really. There's so you don't see many girls playing football. I take my little boys to football on, on a Sunday and there used to be one girl who plays a similar to you when you coached. And I, I just think it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant that, that now the every kid's boy, little boys, little girls, that they're now what well, they should, that this should be the start. I think he invited said something on after the semis on BBC that if now if this doesn't give little girls the chance to buy football boots with, with waste, it's wasted. And I, I really hope that this is what the start of, of I will be as proud of my little girl, Captain Everton Women, as I would for my little boy. And that's how the that's how the world that's how this country now should view it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, Melissa. Right. I I I have nothing else to talk about right now. Have you got anything else or, or, or is that a wrap? Just a fifty one minutes. I think we're done. Yeah, fifty minutes quite short for us, but probably people out there are, are made up that they're not going to get that wrinkled in the bath watching this. They can actually get out and get a get a bottle of beer before they go to bed. But no, nothing to add. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. I think you're going to meet me for a shandy, aren't you? Or a, a soft yeah. drink, and then we're going to, yeah. we're going to get in the ground, and, and it, it all begins again. It all begins again, guys. We're leaving it there. Make sure you go to Across the Park podcast and check out Millsy's socials. Hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.